now I'm going to uh, conclude this part with giving a general protocol for protein extraction. I would say extract proteins in desired lysis buffer. You all have your own way to extract proteins. But make sure, if you can, use DNAs to, to, to degrade uh, DNA. And then use uh, protease inhibitors. And uh, finally, you need the protein assay, of course, um, to, to determine your yield. And then the third step is to clean up, to remove salt, lipids, undesired detergent like SDS, OK? And we solubilize the protein pellets in FEG strip buffer. This is a rehydration buffer. We are ready to load your samples now. And in this, um, it contains the following. Uh, usually, um, you know, our recommended is uh, 7 molar urea, 2 molar thiol urea, 2% chaps with some DTT. And in this case, I don't have to use it because we treat this. Okay. If you if you did the, if you have already done this, remove this from your rehydration buffer. If you want to use your uh, use uh, your own rehydration buffer, if you you know got a rehydration buffer from Barrett, it has in there. It doesn't hurt. Okay. In this case, it doesn't hurt. And uh, 0.5, 02 percent amphalite. And you need a you need a blue color to help you to load the IPG strip. So this is a, just a, a little bit of uh, from the field of blue. When you're ready to do a study with a number of samples, let's say you've got the simplest experiment, three control samples and three treatment groups, try to make enough of your all your buffers so that you're going to treat everything with exactly the same reagent. Don't go back to the fridge, repurchase, you're using a new lot or whatever. Yeah, from <coughs> Keep everything consistent in that study group so that you're not introducing variability based on your study. So uh, it seems to be a little bit random here, but um, I, I collect this from my colleagues and uh, also my friends. General sample prep guidelines, some tips. OK. Keep the sample prep strategy as simple as possible. OK. And then incubate the protein analysis solution for at least one hour. This will increase, you know, the uh, protein uh, yield from the extraction. Um, denature, solubilizing, and disaggregation at the time-dependent process. That means do it quickly. Of course, more than an hour, it seems like. Do it quickly. Don't do not uh, sit, let it sit there for too long. Right. So sample prep solution should be fresh made. Why? If, if it, especially when you have urea, you want to make it freshly. Urea is not that stable. They can, you know, introduce. Um, the, this is the disadvantage of using urea in buffer. It can copy lyse your proteins at the primary amines. Okay, so you want to use this fresh as possible. The longer you keep your urea buffer, um, uh, whether it's uh, room temperature or, or, or refrigerated, the more uh, copolymerization you're going to see with your proteins. That will introduce um, artificial spots on your 2D job. Okay, this this is very important. Try to use it freshly. Fresh. Okay, the storage Um, the um, yes. If you keep it at minus 70. We do this. We make uh, we make one liter. I liquid it into you know, five mil per tube. You're gonna see stacks of urea buffer in there, and we keep it at minus uh, 20 or minus 70, and uh, so we take only one tube out at a time to use it. That will that will help. But if you keep it uh, the solution at room temperature or uh, at 40 degree for uh, a day or two, throw it away. Okay, it's, it's not worth it. I mean, just, just again, back from your sample stretch of the first, the first, uh, the first line. If you solubilize your samples in extraction buffer, mm -hmm. the urea buffer, mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with the DNA that comes into the solution? You can't oh, have DNAs anymore. that's right. Um, this is uh, some kind of. Um, Quick test, quick run to sort of uh, uh, this often refers to cell cultures. 
where you can have very small pellets. You can wash away most of the uh, salt from your uh, your 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 um, culture media, yeah. and so then you uh, extract uh, your proteins in a uh, in a larger, relatively larger volume to keep the salt level really low in there. Also, DNA level really low. Okay. So, and. In this case, you can give a test run to see how well you can sort of, uh, you can uh, uh, separate the proteins on IF. Yes. And um, this is not actually um, the the way I'm doing it with brain tissues or, or yeah. some other tissues. They're right. I always that the the general protocol is the way I go. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, of course, you can store your protein samples in your, again, similar to the urea buffer at minus 80 um, and ready for IF uh, separation. Okay. Yeah? And this is, a, this is a very important point. Never heat your urea sample, uh, urea um, buffer with your proteins because copy methylation will be out of control. <laughs> Right. You can see if you see every most of the spots on your 2D gel have a, have a horizontal spots, you know, in on your 2D gel that tells you that copy emulation is bad. 